Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see a man back for a 15th NFL season. Eli Manning and the New York Football Giants take on Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. With that, let's get up to Charlotte. Standing by our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Just a few moments ago, this building was shaking as the Carolina Panthers emerged from the tunnel here in Charlotte. They are ready to go as the Panthers are set to match up with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They come in with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year. But when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. Two of the bigger disappointments in the first quarter of the season doing battle here as we get this one underway. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, and none other than Cam Newton. And coming off of an early season open week. And in this situation, what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. Now a play fake here on first down. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Hey, Newton on first down. On the move to his left. <laughs> and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. And the offensive starters for the Panthers. By now, you know I love running backs, and C.J. Anderson caught my eye in a big way in 2017. His first 1,000-yard season on the ground, a little bit over 1,000 yards with 1,007, but over 1,200 yards from scrimmage, so you know you can catch it out of the backfield as well. An exciting runner, a powerful runner, and a guy who can be physical when necessary. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, 
you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. They'll run. Anderson. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four on the carry there. It's second and goal. A look now at the starters defensively for the New York Giants. Let's start with Eli Apple out of Ohio State. And when you get pick number 10 in the draft, big things are expected out of you. I would dare say that they do expect that, but they also understand that they believe that his best football is ahead of him. Plenty of room for growth. A tremendous athlete. zero and that's going to be a delay still second down can't afford another delay here as they come up again on second and goal they'll try the air now with Newton and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line a touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Now the Panthers get set third and goal. And the defense has to account for Cam Newton on this play. On the ground, McCaffrey. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Fourth down, and here's Graham Gano now in the field goal unit for the Panthers. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Gano's kick is right through. And the Panthers stay claim to a 3-0 lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback, a multiple-time pro bowler. It's, of course, Eli Manning. Now, the meeting we had with him this week, that's one of the briefer ones we've ever had, isn't it? <laughs> he wasn't too happy after last week. Not happy. Really determined to play a whole lot better, and he really can't play a whole lot worse. He's got to go out and show the team that the goods that he exhibited early are still there. Otherwise, he could lose the confidence that they have in him. And hoping to get rid of that interception ball. And the offensive starters for the New York Giants. Let's spotlight Odell Beckham Jr. who had a thousand yard season his first year in the league despite not playing a full season. And that announced his presence with authority. How about this? The former cover athlete from Madden NFL 16 He's done nothing but pile up 1,000-yard seasons since. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. And this is incomplete. The all-pro linebacker Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. Defensively, here are the starters for Carolina. And they're going to be tough to throw on, no doubt. Currently ranked third in the NFL against the pass. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top 10 in the league against the pass. But the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB, they'd easily move into the top five. Throwing his Manning on third down. He dumps it off to Barkley. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. 
Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. the punter Riley Dixon only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away and this will be taken at the 13 oh what a move give him 11 yards that time on the return and the Panthers will take over now first and 10 here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams run your offense run what put you do best. exactly put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way and the best way to do it touchdowns yeah, and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play yeah it was almost like the bullet train wasn't it i mean just zoom quick 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 and what a terrific play holding them to no gain there's newton now on second down and Olsen over the middle and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Set, ready to eat. From the gun on third down, Newton. The open man is Smith. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. He'll get about four as he's passed the 35 to the 38-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Cam's going to run the option right. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Two straight four-yard runs, and it is steadily working the ball downfield. To me, they're staying right on schedule. First down, you want four yards or more to set up the rest of the drive. They're getting exactly that. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Giants. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. 
A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing on first down is Manning. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. It'll be a gain of four, and that'll make this a second down. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now the rookie first rounder from Penn State, Saquon Barkley. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. And you remember pre-draft, there's a lot of speculation that the Giants should look for their future quarterback at number two with a great possibility. Remember, Sam Darnold from USC was still on the board, but they passed on him to take this runner, Saquon Barkley. And this is exactly why. They think he can extend the life of Eli Manning's career and give them 1,000-yard seasons year after year. They haven't had a 1,000-yard season since 2012. Ahmad Bradshaw did it then. Give him eight yards on the play, and they pick up the first. And that's why you spend a first-round draft pick on a running back, not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third-and-ones, third-and-twos. That's why you draft him. So a solid run by Saquon Barkley, and another first and ten here. A first down carry for Barkley. And an alley to run. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Well, to me, that's taking a big gamble defensively because that alignment, you see, that's normally something you see down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. K1 short. Coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. As Carolina D was third in the NFL in sacks last year. And sometimes that surprises people when they hear that because who's the dominant pass rusher that you think of putting up double-digit sacks? They do it collectively as a unit and get to the quarterback. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. Working from the gun, Manning. And he's going to go down again. Julius Peppers in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Start on the ground with McCaffrey. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively, because I remember playing in these spots, and my coach would always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. Back to the ground. This time it's Anderson. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. 
No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. And they will not get the snap off here. This is going to back them up halfway. Delay of game, offense. They were already backed up. Now they're backed up further. I think they were being so down. careful to make sure all assignments were covered that they ended up running themselves out of time. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. McCaffrey following the penalty. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. So they couldn't get anything there, Charles. Now fourth down from their own two, and a bad situation, to be frank, for the special teams. Yeah, if you are the punting team now, your number one thing is protect the punter because you got to think they may actually come after him trying to get a big play. The second quarter score from KC. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. On first down, Manning. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, the good defensive position, able to affect the play. To throw is Manning. On the catch, this is Russell Shepard. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Giants on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. Shotgun now for Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. First target, first catch at a first down. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taking what the defense will give him. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Manning now on first down. Caught on the right side by Adams. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Again, they'll throw with Manning to Shepard, complete over the middle. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Here's a give to Barkley. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, 
Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now Manning into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ross Cockrell, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last week at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, all right, because I'm not all that skilled as a mathematician. But you're right. It felt like a matter of time, and you've got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. Carolina getting set to take the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. Funches with a catch over the middle. And they'll get him down up past the 15. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time and find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run... Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Here's Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey, and he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to make it fourth down. Taken in at the 22, extending the arm. Oh, yes, it works. A very good return that time. 18 yards, and it'll be Giant football first and 10. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Manning again here on second and 10. And this is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And that takes us from second to third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there. But the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball. He's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. So those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, 
Four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. On second down, McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The tackle is made by Avery Moss. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. They fake the give. Newton. And the tight end Olsen right side. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. And they're not going to get this one off in time. It'll be a delay. Still second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. First down. Here's the run with Anderson. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Newton gonna hand it off to McCaffrey. Just a one yard pickup there and it's gonna make it third down at six. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Throwing on third down, Newton. He hits right, complete. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Now Newton on first down. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. A shotgun snap for Newton. Fights him off. It's caught by Funches. 
Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Newton will bring him up first and 10. And he's 5 for 6 now throwing the ball on this drive. Draw play as Newton gives to McCaffrey. And not much running room. Down to the 32. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Come on now. Here's Newton now on second down. Olsen too much. Going to throw right side here. Complete. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Newton on first down. His throw caught at about the five. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Panthers add on to their lead. And that'll give him a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Gano the extra point, and the lead grows to 10-0. So that drive spans 13 plays. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Odell Beckham now marching back onto the field. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter, and they're losing. you got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion, anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Manning will try again on second down. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. On first and 10, here's Manning. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Well, sometimes those cliches really come true, don't they? When they talk about it takes all 11 to play good defense. We've seen that in this ball game. I think the secondary has to be singled out, though. They are in the presence of every receiver whenever the ball's thrown. And this one, they help force another incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. 
He's got his man on the crossing route. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, this from 48. And Rosas puts this one through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to three. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you, too, in just a bit. But first, let's get everybody caught up with what's going on around the NFL here in Week 5. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Second half begins with a run from Barkley, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. That defensive front four has been very good. They have just not let the running game get going, have they? Not at all. In fact, the entire offense just looking a little bit out of sync in this one. Yeah, sometimes this is why coaches like four down defensive linemen. They feel like they can cover more ground when defending the run. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Over the middle to back him. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, 
not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. We've Defense, yeah. we've, got the de we've, got the, we've got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Alec Ogletree in on the stop. Right didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of sea ball, get ball. The Panthers on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. Out of the gun, Newton. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's White. He had their low TD earlier. Now he's got a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On second down, here's Newton. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he gets it down to the 32. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Panthers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Newton. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Olivier Vernon in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And yeah, the Giants ready to come out now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, 
You see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Second and six, just inside the 30. Play action, Manning. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Throwing his Manning on third down. It's caught, Shepard. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback there's one other thing you need as well a well-thrown ball exactly right have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route a handoff to Barkley and able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. They'll go to Barkley again. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? They'll try to run for it with Barkley. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down in a few inches. They tried their best to pick up that third and one, but... Their surge wasn't enough to counteract what came back at them from the defensive side, was it? Offensive line, especially in the middle, looked like they were on skates a little bit when that one started. So now we bring up fourth and inches. This will be a critical call. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. If you're running out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Newton now to throw. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Olivier Vernon. He's the one to get him. And that's sack number seven for him on the year. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. So now Cam leads the Panthers up following the sack. Carolina facing third and long. Throwing is Newton. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. They had him back deep, got the interception, and now they start inside the 10. Partner forgets starting inside the red zone. They're inside the green zone. From the 10-yard line in, a lot of teams call it that because that's the money zone. Get it into the end zone and make your cash. And New York set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? 
The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not on the team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But some, hey, listen, some, there have got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. He went backwards five yards there on third down to break up fourth. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. And he stopped immediately there. Tackle made by Thomas Davis. Sometimes play calls boil down to philosophy. You know you're facing one of the top ten units against the run in the NFL. So do you decide to keep smashing against them, or do you decide to throw the ball here? He'll get it up the middle. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. What we're seeing from the defense here is a group of guys bearing down, trying to help out their quarterback after he threw an interception. Good stops on the first two downs. It brings up a key third down. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. And yeah, he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He completes it right side to right. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Olivier Vernon brings him down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point. Going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers out in front and in control of the football as well as we begin quarter number four. On third down, Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Newton now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. This is Newton off the play fake to McCaffrey. And caught left side, Olsen. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. 
Newton now after the pick on the last drive. Three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. Newton to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's White. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Charles, thinking back to what you said in the first quarter, that part of the magic elixir for a road victory for these underdogs was going to be winning the turnover battle. Well, they only have one right now. Look at the scoreboard. Yeah, not exactly playing to the form that I subscribed, right? When you talk about winning that turnover battle, that evens things out, especially for a road team, especially for a team that's an underdog. And he won't get to the marker as they're going to stop it for a second straight play right at the line of scrimmage. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the long. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ross Cockrell. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot, they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it. And sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. The throw on second down is Newton. And his throw is incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Operating from the gun. Newton. And he gets it to Funches complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And a quick slant gets exactly 10. And by the nose of the football, they've got a first down. On first down, it's Newton. It's grabbed over the middle by White. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And yeah, not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. A gain of three, second down. 
offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Throwing on third down, Newton. He goes full extension, and he's got it. They'll wind up getting eight, but it's not enough. Fourth down. Well, that kind of catch is supposed to pay off with at least a first down, isn't it? <laughs> Instead, he'll just add it to his highlight reel, but they don't pick up the first. Yeah, he gets the yardage, he gets the catch, but now they have a decision to make. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Eli Manning getting ready to go again on offense. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors. Get still play perfect football. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the gun, it's Manning. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Shepard. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. A fourth quarter score from the Meadowlands. The Jets continuing to pour it on. They're opening the lead up even further. And if they could hold on to that lead, it would be win number four on the season for them. Throwing is Manning, and that is incomplete here. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. again from the 38 on second and 10. Manning again here on second and 10. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion and both sides trying to get to the football and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from the first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, 
and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. This is McCaffrey on the give. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Josh Morrow on the stop. But he was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. To throw on third down. Newton. A bullet throw, but incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. set to take the field and last time they were very fortunate this offense they went for it on four turned it over in their own territory but the other guys held up they didn't give up any points so how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines the head coach <laughs> that was planned going into it not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold but he up. trusted his defense trusted his defense very much and i think that that's how he's going to play this game Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. A good pick up there. Eight yards of the first down completion. A good start there on first down. They've got to have this drive. No doubt about it. Down a couple of scores. They have to find a way to put it in the end zone. Chunk plays, explosive plays. That will be the key to this drive. Four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. On second down, here's Manning. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On first down, Manning. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Manning again to Shepard, complete over the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Manning going to come up on first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Again, they'll throw with Manning. 
Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. No grounding call there. He had a receiver near the right sideline. It was pretty clear there. He just needed to get rid of that one. And he did have a receiver in the area, but initially my view was obstructed, and I thought that was going to be grounding, but clearly the correct call made, and that is no call. Is that why you threw your play sheet down? Is that why you did yeah, it? Is that the flag? You can't be giving me up. I got a lot of issues up here in the booth. On play action, now Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. Shotgun now for Manning. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by James Bradbury. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously disappointing, but you had to go for broke here down two scores. So that forced you to make some throws you definitely wouldn't want to make. And I think this interception is going to pretty much write an end to this one. Carolina getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Ready, ready. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Second and nine now from the 21. Set. McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The Panthers down to a knee out of the victory formation. This one going to wrap up with Cam Newton going down to a knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. And, Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, Boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get <laughs> home after a win like that. So for the Panthers, it'll be a 500 start as the win gets them back to 2-2. Two and two. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Washington Redskins. Meanwhile, for the Giants, they'll fall to 1-4 and four with a loss. And they'll try again next week at home against Philadelphia. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.